keep my eyes open for things that might uh, be I might be able to use for work. I'm always uh, keeping my eyes to the ground, to the sky, to the air, to the trees. And sometimes I'm surprised when I find the unexpected. Finding the unexpected seems to be expected in Karina Bergman's life. Art and crafting have become her passions, transforming commonplace textiles into colorful objects of her imagining. We couldn't really live without color, really. And uh, it's the same thing with textiles that, you know, we have texture ar around our lives every day. We get dressed in the morning, we put on clothes, we have um, upholstery in our car, in our homes, we have linens, we get into bed at night with your, you know, your uh, blankets and things like that. So the, the two are s synonymous, really, whether it's a textile and a color, that there, there are things that you have in your life every day and that maybe we don't really notice them. And when you, when you put crazy colors with a textile, then it's, it's very exciting and it's very stimulating, whether it's visually or, t or touch, right? People want to touch my artwork, although sometimes it's not a good idea. <laughs> A lot of times what I use is uh, reclaimed materials or things that have had a life and now they're going to take on a new life from what I do with them. And I think that's really important actually in my work because sometimes I'll use clothing or people will give me, um, you know, a pair of pants or carpet or, you know, all kinds of textiles. Um, and, then I, and then I change the the spirit of the material really by making it into something else and I think always the original um, the original energy from that material comes through and maybe that's what brings out a lot of the uh, the uniqueness in the work that it had a previous life and I'm changing that into something else that has its second life or third or fourth. <laughs> Karina graduated from Carleton University with a degree in psychology. Perhaps it was her curiosity about human nature that inspired a few unexpected stops on the way to becoming an artist. I first started studying pottery and then I worked in a pottery studio and I worked for quite a few artists um, for a few years, um, part-time job, so I would jump from one job to the other. Um, I also worked for a ladies accessories designer for a number of years, which I think I really honed my craft making skills. Um, so coming from pottery and accessories, working with leather and uh, textiles, all that kinds of things, everything sort of has jumbled in together um, over the past probably about eight or ten years or so everything is built up to what I'm making now. In the exploration of color which is a forceful muse for this non-conformist, Karina started playing with shapes beginning with paintings and wall hangings, eventually taking it to the streets. It was challenging for me because I would normally be stuck to a small sized canvas but putting them on a sidewalk or a street or during an art festival it really expanded them and there's there's no edge of the canvas when you do a street painting so they just get bigger and bigger and around that time I had also started um, constructing them into sculptures so I was changing the medium of the of the theme I guess but um, but keeping the same color and excitement and movement in them those pieces are a real exploration in color and uh, and that st has stuck with me as I've moved into fiber and crafting textiles I think a lot of it comes from um, wanting to maybe put things out in public that people don't really see a lot and I think it also comes to some of the work that I do is performance based, something like the cake show that I worked on. Um, I'm, I'm putting something that people don't really see out in the world and, and it surprises people and it's enjoyable. This cake is called Gâteau Chapeau, so you can wear it on your head like a gâteau chapeau. Wearing cake really gets people's attention, as Karina discovered when she took her cake show on the road to the Toronto Alternative Fashion Show in 2006. It's a collaboration with um, a visual artist called uh, Jenny McMaster, and uh, I had been making some cakes in my studio. I had made a pair of shoes that looked like cake slices, and that's where it really became something that was wearable art and um, almost like a fashion-based project.
And we would walk around with our with our shoes on and in sort of normal clothes, um, being a bit inconspicuous. And I was having people um, carry a cake because it's at a fashion show, so people really liked you know their bags and their accessories. So people got very excited about it. It comes back to it's a it's something that's really common. Uh, everybody loves cake, right? But we're looking at it. There's a lot more layers <laughs> in it than than meets the eye. I think. An experienced seamstress, Karina is working on developing a line of clothing, alternative fashion with her colorful flair. She's used her sewing machine for other eye-catching art projects, like word pillows, which she's placed in a context out of context. I took them out and photographed them in places that weren't necessarily so cozy, like under the bridge in winter and on a picnic bench. And um, it really adds context to the word and it really gives a lot of depth to it. That it's, it is just a word, but when you see this word outside, it kind of throws you for a loop, right? And I, I like, um, I like that aspect of it, that you're working on, on something that then you can take out and use. And um, yeah, there's a lot of possibilities with it. I think it's a power, very powerful project. Expect the unexpected when it comes to commission work for this artist. Karina is painting a floor for a client who shares her fondness for color. She has a couch upholstered in some pretty special fabric and it has a lot of colors and it, it's actually, um, so it's kind of funny, it's a textile which is the fabric but it looks like a painting, it looks like this bladder painting kind of um, all kinds of texture in the painting so I'm transferring the texture of the fabric into the floor. Um, it's going to look fantastic. Remember the unexpected found mitten? Well, it's in good company now with the hundreds of lost mittens Karina has picked up in her travels. The goal of the project was always to reunite someone with a lost mitten, although that hasn't yet happened, but I have hope that it might. I had amassed quite a number of them because I collected them from uh, the transit systems in Ottawa and Montreal and Toronto, so I had this quite a collection and I just thought you know what am I going to do with all these uh, material really it came down to so I thought I would sew them into something and my idea was to make them into sleeping bags because that's something that you can um, encase yourself in it's kind of like a mitten for your hand but a sleeping bag is for your whole body so and I wanted to in that I wanted to test whether the loss of these mittens could keep me warm so by putting them all together all these useless mittens because they're just one ofs together whether that can keep you warm and I took it take them out on uh, camping trips with my partner and they do indeed uh, keep you very very warm almost too warm and they're not at all practical because they're very big I've made carry packs for them um, like a proper knapsack and we took them on the canoe and all this so um, they're not at all practical but they're beautiful sleeping bags and I've made uh, two adult size ones and two ch child size ones with children's mittens so it's almost like a family of sleeping bags Karina's next series will examine germs, fuzzy, fun fur creatures that she knows will create a buzz when she takes them out in public. Art may not always be pretty, but in Karina Bergman's kaleidoscopic world of color, art should always look like fun. Yes, I do try to make it look like fun, but it is really hard, actually. It's a really hard job. Um, if this was easy, everyone would do it, and that's, that's the real truth about it. Um, it's, uh, it is really exciting to do what I do, but there are times when I go, I don't know why I, I do this. <laughs> I don't know how long how much longer I can do it for. You know, I don't have a salary, and people take that for granted. That um, there's no you know two week check here, and it's it's really uh, it's really exciting. I think I really thrive on the challenge of doing it, and the reward at the end of the day is is great. Mm -hmm.